Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia. It is Wednesday the 11th I think of August. I am sitting outside on my balcony. It's not a balcony. It's a patio. We live on the ground floor. I don't know why I said balcony. Anyway, I'm sitting outside. I wanted to do a quick introduction to what I am reading for this reading vlog. I wanted to do this vlog because school starts in a week and a half and I wanted to get one last vlog in before school starts because I love doing these. So the first book I have is a nonfiction book and it is Self-Compassion, The Proven Power of Being Kind to Yourself by Kristen Neff. I have been reading this very slowly and I really want to get this done pretty soon. I'm enjoying this book, but as with all like self-help, I'm, I take everything with a grain of salt and I'm like, yeah, okay, it's self-help, but grain of salt, as always, you take, at least I take what I can use and kind of leave the rest. The next book I'm reading is How Lucky by Will Leitch. Leitch? I'm actually really not sure how to pronounce his last name. I am about 100 pages into this book. This is a book about a disabled man who works from home as like a social media rep for a regional airline and he sees a woman being kidnapped one morning and kind of the fallout and everything that happens. This book is interesting and I am enjoying it. I do have some issues with the writing style and I don't know if the author has a disability. I don't know if this is an own voices book at all. I believe the main character has something called SMA, which I don't remember what it stands for right now, but it affects the main character's ability to do like anything. Like he can't speak. He uses an iPad and like a text to voice app on an iPad to speak and all these things. And there was a chapter Luckily, it was pretty short, but it was just the main character addressing the reader and talking about his disability. And he, it was like a question and answer format. And he's like, these are the questions I know you're going to ask. And these are the answers to them. And personally, I didn't really love that chapter. The moral or the message of the story in that case becomes more important than the actual story. And I think there are ways the author could talk about this disability and not do it in that format just because that format doesn't feel genuine to me. Editing Alicia here wanted to real quick say please excuse all of the air conditioning sounds you were going to hear in this vlog. It was on and I didn't even think about the fact that it was on during some of these clips. Also please excuse the cricket sounds that you can hear even though all of my windows and doors were closed. That's just how loud the crickets are. Okay, friends, it's been a couple hours. I did my stuff I needed to do. I've only read a little bit because I listened to a very long podcast, like an hour and a half long podcast and then ate lunch. Um, I also spent a decent amount of time making a reading plan for Sorrowland by River Solomon because Sandy from Misreads them a lot and I are going to do a buddy read for that book in a couple weeks and I'm honestly so excited so I started working on like a reading plan. I also have been planning a buddy read with David Wiley that I think is going to happen in November and I'm just really excited about it. Honestly like full like vulnerability. I have really enjoyed like making friends here on booktube and making friends has been something I always have struggled with in person so it just makes me really happy to like do these things and like be a part of it. Hello friends it is Wednesday night I've retired to the bedroom I'm in my oversized pajama shirt. I've brushed my teeth I'm ready for bed. I just wanted to check in because I was actually able to finish How Lucky 
this evening. I've read like just under 200 pages of this today. Yeah, I'll just talk about it tomorrow. Just popping on to say I finished. Good morning, friends. It is Thursday morning. I wanted to check in and review, well, not really review, but talk about my thoughts from How Lucky, which I was able to finish last night. The first thing I'll say is like the end of this book, I got really engaged in and I finished it really fast. I read the last like 70 pages in like half an hour, which this is not high fantasy or sci-fi or anything like that. So it does go a little bit faster, but I still feel like that's, that's fairly fast, at least for my reading pace sometimes that's that's pretty good progress so it just kind of speaks to like how fast this book can go and I'm still conflicted a little bit on if I like or dislike this book because I really like the mystery element of it I did find out in the acknowledgments that the author is not disabled he didn't learn about SMA, um, which is what the main character in this book has until his best friend's son was diagnosed with it. Nope. His son's best friend was diagnosed with SMA and they've, his son has known his best friend for like five or seven years now. So he's had a kid that he's known for like seven years that has this disease and he wrote about it in his book book. I personally don't love that because I personally think he had a lot of good information about the disease and about I think what it's like to be disabled but it lacked all nuance. It also kind of raises the question of like why is he writing this story because this ties into my other issue this feels very performative and feels very look at me because what happens is he'll write the character saying things like you know homophobia is bad yes it is don't be homophobic but then later in the book he'll have the character say extremely like heteronormative things and like put people in these boxes that are like not really overtly homophobic but still kind of like okay you said homophobia is bad instead of telling me why don't you write your book in a way that doesn't play into the erasure of gay and bi and uh, LGBTQ people like one example is at one point in this book, the main character makes a comment about he's 26 and he's narrating a lot about his life as a teenager and as a young kid. And he makes a comment about how he was like all other teenage boys and how all teenage boys like to stare at women and women's bodies. But that completely erases the fact that there are gay teenage boys and asexual teenage boys who don't like to do those things so don't tell me homophobia is bad then go and erase the experiences of those of those lgbtq plus teens with you know like all boys are attracted to women kind of garbage also this happens with race he's talking about how bad racism is and then later there's a comment about how he likes where he lives because it's not just boring white people it's uh there's a lot of japanese people there and a lot of indian people so for me with how i view it i'm like that just feels like very um kind of like fetishizing or like tokenizing these people being like, I like them because they're Asian. So just things like that made this feel very, look at me, look at how progressive I am. Anyway, enough about this book. Like I said yesterday, I'm going to try to finish my nonfiction book today. So I will update you about 
that because hopefully that will happen. It's Thursday afternoon. It's a beautiful day outside. So I'm sitting on the patio looking at the trees. I have my writing journal, my drawing journal, and my book. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I finally finished self-compassion. So I'm glad to have it done. I did put a lot of tabs in it and like overall I did enjoy it. I thought it was a very interesting read. I actually think there's a lot of good stuff that I can apply in my life and that will help with my mental health. So that's nice. The author of this book has a son who is autistic. It's talking about taking him, they took him to Mongolia to get healing and just the whole time she was explaining it in this book I was like this is weird not like not that what they were doing was weird but like the fact that they traveled to a different country and they actually traveled to a lot of different places after they came back from Mongolia to get natural healing for their autistic son and I don't know the whole way she talks about it just made me feel kind of uncomfortable she was like our son was five and he wasn't potty trained and he kept having these tantrums and we weren't able to cure his autism but we were able to heal him to the point where people don't think he's autistic anymore and like we were able to heal him of a lot of his bad autistic traits. I don't think those are the exact words she used, but it was kind of like that idea of like healing him of his aut bad autistic traits. And I was like, no, like, don't put that on your kid. Don't put that on autistic people. Don't be like, oh these traits of having tantrums or like being nonverbal or having issues with sensory things like don't say those are bad because that's just super stigmatizing you know so I didn't like that whole section and like the whole way it was discussed was weird so as I said earlier with all like self-help books I take what I can use and leave what I can't all that being said I will introduce you to my new nonfiction read tomorrow I hopefully will get more fiction reading done tonight I haven't started another book yet but I will let you know when I do pick one good morning friends it's Friday morning I'm in my truck because I just had a job interview I'm so warm in here because the AC does not work so I'm not gonna make this long but I just thought I'd say good morning I didn't check in again last night but I did start another book I started the record of a space born few by Becky Chambers and I will check in with that a little bit later but I thought I'd just say good morning the interview is finished I think it went pretty well okay I'm home as you can tell and I thought I'd quickly talk through my thoughts so far on Record of Our Space Born Few by Becky Chambers. I'm about 46 pages in. I'm 48 pages in. Basically 50 pages into this book. So far so good. This follows characters who are like kind of adjacent to one of the characters in the first book. So all three books follow different characters, but they're all kind of connected in some way. So for example, one of the characters in Record of a Spaceborn Few is the sister of one of the character characters in A Long Way, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. That is the fiction book I'm currently reading. And today I'm going to start 400 Souls, edited by Ibram X. Kendi 
and Keisha and Blaine. I'm excited to read this book. I've been wanting to read this book for over a month now, ever since I bought it. This is a collection of short stories that follows African American history from 1619 to 2019. And they collected like 99 different authors. All of their names are here on the back of the book. I'm excited to read this book because I think it's going to be a really interesting format. I think it's again going to help me learn a lot, which is what I'm really going to my nonfiction for right now is learning. I used to read memoirs and I think you can learn from memoirs, but I'm kind of going away from that and I'm reading more like focusing on history. I'm focusing on like physical health and trying to learn more about physical and mental health and things like that. So this is, this is the next book up. Okay. It's Friday evening and I'm just chilling. I was able to read so far about 20 more pages of this, actually 30 more pages of, of Record of a Space Born Few and enjoying it so far. I am really enjoying it. I don't have anything really to say that I didn't say the last time I checked in and talked about it. So I have, am working on this. It's going pretty well. And I started 400 Souls. I literally just read the introduction and I'm already hooked. And I already have two little yellow tabs. So and that's a good thing. I'm definitely annotating this book. I annotate all of my nonfiction now. Um, so yeah. This is no exception. I'll annotate it and mark up parts that I like or things that I learn. And that's it for now. I think tonight I'm going to do some puzzling. I'm very excited about it. We're doing a Winnie the Pooh puzzle. And it's literally a picture of Winnie the Pooh made up of other pictures of Winnie the Pooh. I'll show you. It's very fun. This is Brelden on our puzzle mat. We literally just started this last night. And Brelden wants to eat the peanuts, but I'm not going to let him. And this is the puzzle that we're doing. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Um, as you can see, Brelden feels very comfortable climbing all over our puzzle. But this is the puzzle we're doing. As you can see, Winnie the Pooh. Lots of different little pictures of scenes from the different Winnie the Pooh uh, like episodes and shows that make up the whole puzzle. So I'm very excited about this. This is actually a puzzle I've had for over a decade because I've had it since I was in high school, maybe even before, and I never finished it. Good evening, friends. It is literally 8.30 on Saturday evening. But I thought I'd do a check-in because I haven't done one yet today because I didn't feel very good earlier today. I felt pretty sick. So didn't do a check-in. But now, as you can see, Brelden is sleeping on me. I will talk through the books, but I won't be able to grab them. You know, they're like right there. They're right next to me. So I read the first story in 400 Souls. I might have to go back and reread it though because I feel like I didn't absorb it very well because I read it right after I woke up from a three hour nap. It did feel kind of like a second introduction though because it wasn't it wasn't really about the time period like it was but there's also a lot of references to things that happened after the time period that that story was about. So I might go back and reread it just to see if I get more out of it. Um, I'm also making progress in a record of a spaceborn few. And like I'm loving that book. Same story that it always is. It's very good. And I love the characters. And 
Um, Philo's in the other room practicing Chinese, if you can hear him talking, that's what's happening. But um, I'm loving the characters and record of a Spaceborn few. I also started an audiobook. I started Armit Armistice? Armitice. One of those two. It's by Laura Elena Donnelly. And it is the second book to Amberlo, which I read in July. And I haven't gotten very far in it because I started to fall asleep while I was listening to it, so I turned it off. But so far, like, it's fine. What I'm really noticing so far is I'm not remembering names. And this is something I didn't really talk about in the first one, but there's so many names and I can never remember if it's a place name, if it's a character name, if it's like a political party name. I'm having a hard time remembering all of those. I'm enjoying it so far, what I have listened to. Anyway, I don't remember what I was saying. Berlin left and wiped my memory of what I was saying about Armistice? Full transparency, I know this is like a term I should know because I'm pretty sure this is like a political term related to war. I have no idea. I have no idea what this word means. I should probably look it up, but I'm pretty sure I should know what this word means. And I don't. But that's fine. I'm gonna go read now and then maybe puzzle too. Good evening, friends. It's Sunday. I haven't done any reading to update you on, but I have been working on the puzzle. So we're making some progress and watching some WNBA. So that's what we're up to this evening. Like I said, haven't done any reading, so I can't update you on that. But thought I'd just check in, show you the basketball and the puzzle. Good morning, friends. It is Monday morning. Just want to do a check-in. I have made some progress in Record of a Spaceborn Few. I only have about 100 pages left to finish this book, so hopefully that means I'll be getting it done soon. Still loving it. That's the only book I've made progress on, really. So that is that. I uh, didn't mention this when I checked in yesterday, but I have a wound on my hand. I don't know how well you can tell that it's like discolored under the band-aids. I think it's kind of hard to tell, but it's like discolored and swollen because my cat, I took him outside on his leash and there was another cat outside and the other cat tried to come up and say hi to my cat and my cat doesn't like other cats. So he wanted to attack and to protect him and the other cat, I instinctually just picked him up. And so he attacked my hand, which means I'm not doing very much with this hand right now because it hurts. I was surprised by how much, just how painful it was after he bit me. That's the excitement in my life that's happening. Editing Alicia again, just wanted to pop in real quick and give an update about my hand. It's looking a lot better. I will give you a quick, you can see there was, you can maybe see, there was two kind of bigger puncture wounds where my cat's teeth went in. Um, and I, I know it's hard to tell on camera that it did get really swollen. It got really red. I actually think it was infected. I didn't end up going to the doctor because I didn't think about infection until too late. I think it was infected because of not only the swelling that happened, but also the heat that came off of it was like, it was very warm while it was swollen. And then also some pus came out of it. So I probably should have gone to the doctor and maybe this can be a warning for everyone else. If you get a cat bite, maybe go see a doctor. That's the update if you were wondering about my hand. Editing Alicia again, again, this time to wrap up the vlog. I have a distinct memory of wrapping up the vlog, 
but I can't find the footage. So this was a pretty good reading vlog. I'm going to make this a very short wrap up because I have so much footage from this and I'm trying to keep it at like a somewhat reasonable length of time. I hope this vlog has been coherent. It has been a good vlog. I finished three books, I think, during the actual reading of the vlog that I was doing. Um, so I definitely finished How Lucky. Had my thoughts about that. I finished Self Compassion. I finished Reckoner of a Spaceborn Few and loved that, obviously. And in the clip that does not exist, I also talked about how I started The Austere Academy. I actually have now since finished that, even though that finishing it wasn't supposed to be part of the vlog, but I guess it is now. And it was okay. It's getting harder and harder for me to suspend my disbelief for those books, but I will save talking about that for another video because I really don't need more footage to edit. I am also currently reading 400 Souls, as I've discussed, and I also started Rogue Protocol by Martha Wells, so those are my current reads that I guess happened during the unintentional part of this vlog. And I'm definitely enjoying Rogue Protocol so far. I have only read like one chapter, but I enjoy Murderbot, so it'll be fun. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Let me know down in the comments some books you've been reading recently. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!